Hello guys, and welcome to the Penny Podcast. My name is Andres Bear. I'm in 12th grade, and I'm the Capo Student Media Web Producer. And I'm Yash Rabula. I'm in 12th grade, and I'm a staff writer. If this is your first time tuning in, the Penny Podcast is a weekly podcast that incorporates entertainment and discussion elements. Please excuse our sound quality as we're recording this episode through Zoom. This week, our CSM highlight goes to Anjali Krishna for her article, Brandy Melvin Fueling Dangerous American Culture of Eating Disorder, published under our opinion section. I recite the opening to her article. The ideal Brandy girl is an easily grasped concept. She's tall, carefree, and ultra thin. She fits effortlessly into the Brandy Melvin's iconic Tilden pants and plaid skirt sets. She's happy, fun, amazing, and everything you want to be and can. But only if you're skinny. To read the rest of Krishna's article, visit kapostudentmedia.com. This week on One Shot, the song Savage by Megan the Stallion has been remixed to include verses from the queen herself, Beyonce. After gaining massive amounts of attention through the sharing and subsequent dancing of the song on TikTok, the original Savage peaked at number 14 on the Billboard 100. Due to the cultural significance of having Beyonce on the remix, I wouldn't be surprised if the song catapults to a number one position. As both Megan and Beyonce are from Houston, which they reference multiple times in the song, all proceeds gained through the song will go to Bread of Life, a Houston-based organization serving the homeless community. Now, speaking of TikTok, Today's Penny Podcast discussion is all about what made our high school years memorable. In a surprising twist, coronavirus will not be at the forefront of everything we talk about. This episode is about focusing on that which made us laugh or smile in the years we attended Capo High School. Now, we are all seniors, so what is everyone's name, position on staff, and favorite color? Um, Hi, my name is Nishant Medicharla. I'm the business manager, and my favorite color is navy blue. Hi, my name is Nanette Pator. I'm a staff writer, and my favorite color is purple. And hi, I'm Alicia Pajavade. I'm also a staff writer, also favorite color purple. To set the tone of the podcast, what was your favorite hall at CHS? I'm talking E hall, B hall, D hall, etc., and why? Um, I think my favorite hall would probably be D hall because you know I'd walk into Sidekick at the end of the day and. My friend who also, who's in engineering, also went to D Hall, so I'd say like, you know, I'd talk to her and then I'd see all my sidekick friends. So it's something I always, you know, um, it's always been memorable to me because I've been in D Hall every single year of high school. Um, My freshman year, I was in engineering, which was also in D Hall. And then the past three years on staff, um, sidekick has been in D Hall. So I think that's been very memorable for me. Um, for me, I think E Hall is one of my favorites because, like, I really got to find it out like this year because I have like two classes in that hall, and I also think it's just more quiet compared to the rest of the halls. And like, I usually just hang out with my friends over there during like religious periods or if we have like free time. I would definitely say C Hall because the downstairs C Hall because that was where all my language classes were. And every single year of high school, I did a language class. I did like Spanish and ASL. So every single year. It would be it'd be cool because every single year the language teacher I have would be further down the hallway. So like when I'd walk down the hallway, I would see all my previous language teachers to get to the new language teachers. And so like I would talk to them every single day and I would pass them and they'd always be really supportive and be happy that I was continuing languages. So like those that whole like hallway had all my classes in it for languages and all the teachers I had. So I like the hallway. Um, I don't necessarily have a favorite hallway because I don't know. I never vibe with any of them, but I'd say the library is my favorite because I spent almost all my um, high school there because I came here sophomore year and I didn't have really, I didn't really have friends. So I just hung out there and was on my computer watching movies and stuff. So not a hallway, but the library is my favorite. The <laughs> library. Um, I would say that D hall would be my favorite just because of D one fifteen. That's my favorite classroom, the newsroom. Um, and yeah, I was also there, What as Nishant was talking about, of, of four years there. I would say just because of that reason, it's my favorite hall. It just resonates with you. That's your high school experience, you say? Yeah. Who were the two favorite teachers that supported you every step of the way and formed a long-lasting relationship with you? 
I would probably say um, definitely Mr. Wofford because again, he's been my teacher for the past three years. So I think he's seen me improve a lot um, as a staff member on the sidekick. And I would also say my stats teacher, um, Coach Kemp or Don Kemp, um, because, you know, whenever we'd talk, we'd just, we'd, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't talk just about st statistics. We would talk about, you know, just life in general and like what was happening outside of the classroom. So I feel like those two teachers really um, helped me a lot. And, you know, both of them still talk to me a lot. So I think they formed a long lasting relationship with me. Um, for me, I think Mr. Dixon, cause he has been my teacher for the past three years. Like I was with um, him for academic decathlon and world history. So he's really seen me grow from like sophomore year to senior year. And we also talk a lot more about outside things beyond the classroom. And the second teacher for me is Miss Alexander. She was my English teacher junior year. Although she left, she was like a real, at first she was intimidating, but once you really get to know her, she's just a, she's just a personality that you just don't see in a lot of teachers. Okay, and for me, I would, again, going back to the languages, um, I would say my ASL teacher, Miss D, or, technically Miss Payne, but we all call her Miss D. And so she's the only ASL teacher. So for every single year, you're going to have her as the teacher. And I think definitely she's seen me grow because I remember in sophomore year, I was just a completely different person. And she saw how my, per my, pers my personality kind of blossomed in that class, you could say. And I became a lot more outgoing and all that stuff. And yeah, we talk about like, the future. We talk about things not related to school. And I guess my second teacher would be not that it's not the same. They haven't seen me grown because I just had them this year. It was Dr. Johnson for my stats teacher. But I just think he's had an effect on me because he's like, he's just a really good person. Like not only a teacher, but he talks about his life experiences and law and his, you know, experiences being a Peace Corps officer in Kenya. And he tries to incorporate like life philosophies in the classroom and give us advice. And also he had a whole lesson about like how stats like, applies to the real world. I just think he's a good person overall. So he's had like a lifelong effect on me. Um, I'd say <laughs> going back to the whole library thing, I feel, I think Miss Hebron, the librarian has really, um, like really good effect on me because she's seen me grow from this introverted, like, person who just moved to the US to like someone who's like a little bit more outgoing and like found something I really like. So I think she's one of the people who I really admire the most and and we f I feel like we'd still be talking out even if I did graduate and like go to college and stuff. Um, yeah, what's yours? Hmm. I would say that Mr. Wofford would be my number one just because he's seen me like like as y'all were talking about growth like he's seen me grow completely um as you said I used to be extremely extremely introverted uh to the point where it was like eh, not that good and he, he saw that like how I as, as Alicia was also talking about blossomed into something else um I learned how to write for the psychic I learned I took on different roles and then I eventually became the Coppola student media web producer and that was a crazy thing for me had my own podcast. So he has, he's kind of been there for every step of the way and guided me uh, to the point where it's like, man, it's, it's like basically a mentor. That's it's more than a teacher, in my opinion. Um, but for a second, my second teacher, I would say Mr. Gillette, because I had him as a freshman and that was my first like AP teacher. And I was like, well, this is so cool. Um, and then just through the years, he kind of saw me uh, develop as also like a psychic writer because I came to him for stories and I came to him for ideas and also we just share similar interests in music rock music and the effect it's had on the world and how it spread throughout the world uh, but yeah in terms of interest and in seeing me grow I think he would be number two did you do you not compare Mr. Wofford to like your second father we well, were having this conversation and you said that. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I would, honestly. I mean, if you, I've spent enough time 
with him. He's seen me grow enough and he's helped me enough. I would say that <laughs> if I had yeah. the, the, the option to. Yeah. I mean, I never thought I'd write and I think I should also give him credit because I never knew I was capable of writing something, but I guess I am, you know? Yeah. Wait, so can real. I also add Mr. Wofford? I feel like <laughs> because it's only been like, because in the classroom, it's only been like a couple months. It wasn't even a full school year, right? With yeah. him, I definitely think like, I was so hesitant to even take sidekick, but I think he's just a really amazing teacher. He's so supportive and like, he, you can tell how much he cares about the program and how much he wants us to grow. And I remember I asked him for advice. I was like, I want to go into journalism and I want to do it in college, but I don't know if I can do it. Like, do you think I'd be good at it? Do you think I'm like prepared enough? I've only taken, you know, psychic for one year and like, it's not that stable according to my parents. And he gave me like a really good pep talk. And like, we talked through everything. And I think like, that's the reason like I'm doing what I'm doing now in my future. So it's definitely had an effect on me. That is amazing. Yeah. His impact is immense on close to every student that he's, he's, he's had in his classroom. Like, He's amazing. That's that's all I have to say. <laughs> so basically, Walford is everyone's father. <laughs> <laughs> For real. So from homecoming 2016 to summer 2019, if you could experience one moment of your high school career again, which one would it be? Yeah. If so, about a year ago. Um, um, after the sidekick, we went to Anaheim, California, for a convention. Um, and this was the first time I went on like a trip without my parents and just like my friends and of course Mr. Wofford, um, Miss Kay, but um, I think this trip was something, it was honestly one of the best trips like I've ever went on. Like I still remember like obviously we learned a lot on that trip, but it also it was just it was just so much fun. Um, we all went to the beach and I just I still remember to this day feeling so happy while I was on the beach and just like, you know, like making TikToks and like m making Mr. Wofford do the woe and, and like just everything that day was so much fun. And like, I think that is one day that I can look back on and I'm, I can like, I can like vividly remember that that was such a good day and that life was just perfect on that day. Cause the day we were all on the beach and we were just enjoying life and, you know, we went to this really nice restaurant on the beach and then we walked around and we went for ice cream after. And um, I think also that like that whole memory, I think has taught me to like, you know, just cherish the small moments. Cause even though it just seems like, oh, you're going on the beach. Like, it was just, it was perfect. Like I felt like everything in life, you know, just fit like a puzzle, like it fit perfectly. And so if there is one thing I could relive, it would, it would be that experience, just going to the beach in Anaheim, California with my sidekick friends. Um, for me, I think just any of my like DECA state trips, because I used to like, I'd go with my friends because they were also in DECA. And like, we just get, it was fun because we get to miss school and it was just on our, like we were, even though we were chaperoned, we were still on our own, I guess. And we just had a lot of fun because like we just went, traveled around the city that we were in or just overall the trips made a lot of like memories and a lot of inside jokes that my friends have to this day. And I just really miss it because I think it's just part of my identity being in DECA and to have fun in it. It's just something I could enjoy. Okay. I didn't go on any trips. I don't think I went on a single field trip during high school, but I will say I wish I could relive certain classes. Um, my favorite classes, like I said, were language classes and also like health science classes. I think that was the other consistent class I took throughout high school. And even though I didn't really like the content of it, um, I learned that I didn't like it. So it helped me grow. And then I also had like all my friends were also in the health science classes. So I had like the best times in there. Um, with them, so yeah, probably mine. Mine is really not that deep. It's just um, every morning we used to actually get down from the bus and I used to run to the library. And I think the library is like the constant thing for me now. Uh, and then all my friends and everyone used to sit in this one corner and we used to like talk for like a good thirty minutes because my bus used to be early, and. I didn't get to experience that this year because some of them graduated and some of them, like, we don't have the same release periods anymore. 
and that that sense of like I have friends was really amazing for someone who like did not really have friends growing up that's kind of sad but I felt really safe in that small bubble so yeah that's my favorite memory and we said go get Taco Bell and Starbucks and stuff um I would relive my first time walking to school and my last time walking to school because like well just walking to school in general was was kind of interesting for me because it gave me about uh well 30 minutes to get there and 30 minutes back so about an hour of of me time i guess you would say uh i could listen to my music i could kind of run through some thoughts ideas most of the stories that i that i wrote were like brainstormed in that time when i was a writer most of the podcasts that i made were brainstormed in there they all came from that period of time cuz i kind of live in a in a in a noisy house so there 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 really isn't quiet over here uh, quiet moments so yeah I would use that as to like channel it was almost like meditation but in terms of like the first and the last time I know that the first time I walked it was like oh my god this is scary because I, I, had, I had never walked like anywhere I think <laughs> I just I wasn't exposed to that type of living because I had I had um yeah I had wa- I walked to middle school but that was like a two minute walk not a what, 35 minute walk 30 minute walk but yeah that, that was like an eye-opening experience because it felt really cool I felt like I had freedom and then the last time that I walked uh, before spring break of this year, uh, I would say that something about the walk was a bit interesting. Um, I, I've mentioned this to some people on staff, uh, but I actually took pictures of my walk for some reason there, I, that I, I don't know why, but I, I like documented my walk in a way. And I didn't, I didn't know that was going to be my last time walking to school. So I have like that kind of footage of it and pictures of it in a way but also just the way that I felt walking to school it felt like things were finally like clicking um I I would say I felt like my self-confidence was up for some reason compared to when the the first time that I walked um I wasn't walking with my head down I was walking with it up and stuff like that so I would I would definitely say those two times who knew such small like small thing could be could mean so much (laughs) For real, exactly. Walking. Yeah, I know. It's... That's that's so sweet. Yeah. Hey, all of ours <laughs> are so sweet. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling so nostalgic. Oh my god. I know. Yeah. Like I'm just thinking about like I'm. I'm still like as y'all were talking. I was just thinking about like that day on the beach. Like, I'm sorry. Like I was just like, <laughs> and like my Kelly Wade, the past um last year's editor in chief, was just like, this is a perfect day. And like I that's still like I can still hear her voice like as like I'm thinking about it. I don't know. Oh, yeah. My heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, in what ways do you dress differently now than you did as a freshman? I think I'm going to start this because, oh, mine is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> when I first moved here, my parents bought clothes from Walmart. <laughs> uh, my first set of clothes were from Walmart and some of them were bought, obviously, from, from Dubai. But yeah, and now I kind of like branched out into like other other clothing, even though I kind of like wear the same jeans. I don't have money to buy clothes, to buy clothes <laughs> but um, I kind of like branched out and like go thrifting and stuff. I feel like now my closet is kind of looking good. But before you, it just, it used to be blue, constant blue. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, ugh. <laughs> It, I think it has to do with just me finding what I like as I'm growing, you know, before my parents used to shop for me and not myself. And now I get to like make those small, different, small decisions, but like it's still big for me because I finally get to have like a choice on what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. Self-expression. Mm-hmm. For me, I think freshman year, I, okay, I like, I call, like I feel like my outfits were okay, but like they were also just the colors were some of the ugliest. Like I'd wear like neon blue and like with my like skin complexion, like I just didn't know like what worked. And like also like my parents obviously did a lot of shopping for me. And I'd come and like, but I'd always wear like polo shirts and like cargo shorts, like some of the ugliest stuff. Like I like if someone buys like a cargo uh, like short for me like I cannot wear that anymore like that doesn't happen 
I feel like now, like my, I feel like now it's definitely improved. I, but it's like, it's, it could still improve, you know, more. I think I'm still finding what works for me and what doesn't. And I feel like high school has been that kind of like transition phase, but I definitely, I definitely have learned to stay away from neon shirts and cargo shorts. <laughs> so. Um, for me, I think freshman year, I was just really cringy when it comes to fashion because I remember I used to wear like emoji sweatpants and like watermelon print shirts and it was just a bad time. But now I think I just dress more comfy. I don't know. I think I just, I don't really dress when it comes to school, but like outside of school, I think I found myself, like I know my aesthetics, but I just don't really care about that in school. So yeah, I feel like your vibe is watermelon shorts and emoji oh <laughs> no. pajamas. That no. I don't. That just yells you. I don't know. <laughs> you should see my middle school self. I would wear like bright neon like leggings and everything. It was just really bad. Middle school was point. just neon. I don't know <laughs> why. <laughs> she remembers that, right? Oh my god, it was so bad. Everyone used to make fun of me. They still do. <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of make fun, my friends made fun of me because I would have weekly hoodies and t-shirts i would just wear the same thing with black leggings black leggings were my best for even in middle school i would wear black leggings with any t-shirt and any hoodie and i had these four hoodies that everyone knew that i would wear and every time i'd wear them and i'm like why do you care like i'll just, I'm just i don't because like when you're in school like especially like junior year like you know you have other you have so many things to worry about and like the last thing i was worrying about was what i wanted to wear which is looking back i feel like Fashion is a way to express yourself, right? It's not just something like, oh, people are like, oh, why do you dress up so much for school? Like, it's just school. But people find, like, expression in fashion. People feel more confident and, like, happier wearing clothes that make them feel good. So I feel like towards the end of senior year, I started doing that because I saw the difference it made. I didn't just dress comfy. I obviously also did. But I had some moments where I didn't, I kind of dressed up a little bit. But um, also, like, I guess, like, dressing more modestly because I feel like before I'd be pressured by other people's fashion. And most people, like, a lot a lot of people, like, not a lot of my friends are just as modest as I'm supposed to because of my religion. So I feel like now I'm more comfortable. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to dress this way. Like, y'all can dress your way. I'm not going to be influenced. And, like, I'll dress the way I want. So I'm not influenced as much by, or, like, pressured, I guess. Yeah, I also feel like um, the way you, the the way you're productive also has to do with like the, the way you dress. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm way less productive if I'm wearing clothes like this in <laughs> school. Mm-hmm. Um, like hoodies and stuff. But when I actually put in the effort in the morning to like try to decently look good, I feel like I'm more productive and I'm actually like more confident and confident in the way I'm like taking in information. Mm-hmm. That's just me, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, that goes with what my answer would be. Uh, when I was a freshman, uh, I I didn't care what I put on. Like I used to wear a bunch of V-necks. I don't know why I did that. And, like graphic tees that weren't eh. So, but nowadays it's like I I kind of like subscribe to the whole minimalism idea, uh, minimalist idea. So like all my shirts have nothing on them for the most part. All my pants are like chill. Or I just I literally bought like four pairs of the same shorts. So I, I'm on that level. I know. My mom would probably hate me if I like started making all the shirts the same color, but you know, I might do that one day. Um, but yeah, I, 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 when I feel more comfortable, I, I feel like I can do stuff because I don't have to worry about it so much. And it's like, I don't know, it just it's, it's like kind of liberating in a way. Which year did you have the most emotional, physical, mental growth as a person? Um, I think for me, it was definitely senior year. Um, just with the whole coronavirus pandemic, it really put my life in perspective. And I think it showed me really what's important. Um, Again, with my like prom um, column that I released like a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think that um, emotionally and mentally, it showed me that to not worry about like, you know, like arbitrary things. And like, you know, I still do, but I think I'm getting better at it slowly. um, Because, you know, this pandemic just canceled everything I was looking forward to and you know I was always like putting off like having fun um for my um second semester senior year and now like it's not happening so I think just living in the moment is one of the biggest things I've learned and I think that's how I've grown 
this year. And I feel like that is probably one of the biggest things I would take from high school, if that makes sense. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, I'd always put things off for the second semester of my senior year. And now that it's canceled because of the corona, I'm just sitting there thinking about how I wish I could have just done things at the moment instead of, like, saving or waiting. And senior year, I think, is the personal, like, best year for me because I've really learned to, like, find myself and just love myself more because, like, compared to the other years, I was just more worried about other things like my grades and everything. And now that, like, senior year grades don't really – isn't really in a big factor, I kind of, like, found myself in just doing things that I like. So, yeah. Yeah, mine is similar to that. Um, I think I had a very different approach to senior year, which is why I think I developed and changed the most this year. I think this year I changed my priorities before it was just grades and everything else kind of was on the back burner. And I finally saw the negative effect that was having on my life, like just focusing on grades, not on family and friends and your hobbies and like religion, your health, mental and physical. And when I I started focusing on all of that too this year and not focusing on grades. It has made the biggest difference. And I think also I've, I've always been an introverted person. I don't think there's anything wrong with being an introvert. Like I love being introverted, but it kind of mixed with being socially anxious. So I think this year I definitely started becoming more outgoing um, and participating more and just not worrying about what other people are going to think of my opinion and doing things that make me uncomfortable. And from that confidence has come a lot. So I think, like, for example, taking sidekick and just, like, doing things that I like that scare me. So I think that's the biggest thing. And I think that's where I've, because I've always known to do that, but this year I actually applied all of it. So I think senior year I developed the most as a person. So yeah. I think mine's completely different from everyone else's. Uh, I think I peaked my junior, junior year um, because I really found how to talk to people I guess because I'm obviously really loud and obnoxious Alicia can relate um um she knows she uh when I first saw in psychic I was sitting with her and she was like shut the heck up anyway um I really I really like found how to talk to people and how to be more social and how to I don't know I also made friends my junior year and like friends who know who know will last for my for the entire like in my life so I think I just really picked my junior year and I found what's important what's not yeah um also mine's going to be a bit different as well but I would say like since sophomore year I got my first job and then junior year I got my second job like th- that kind of time span was like super growth. Like I'm doing new stuff. I'm, I'm, I have a job, I'm working, um, uh, navigating a- as Alicia kind of mentioned, like social anxiety. I, I was, it was kind of crippling at one point. I-, I will admit that, but with my second job, it just kind of opened so many doors for me and ultimately led up being to uh, my favorite year, my best year being senior year, which is where I really like, I learned like, how to grasp everything in terms of like mental health and how to take control of stuff and just kind of stop caring about things a lot. Uh, even though I had like the most quote unquote success, you would say with my work, I cared the least about my work senior year because I just kind of let things happen as they, as they did. And while I still am like a little uh, of a perfectionist, especially with the podcast and, and just school work and also my own like, music and and creative work um i feel like this this year senior year 2019 2020 just kind of taught me that like to 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 chill out for a second and and to take things slowly and that's been something that i've like just lived been living by basically like uh, since now since that happened if you could choose one album to encapsulate your high school experience which one would it be and why if I could choose one album, it would probably be, um, it's called Dreamland by this band called Coin. They're very small. I don't think a lot of people know them, but um, I just, I listened to, I, this is like probably the first album where I've listened to all the songs and I've genuinely liked all the songs. 
because it's just this album is very it, it gives off these like nostalgic vibes and it like carefree and just live in the moment vibes which again like resonates with my senior year but um you know this this period i feel like is a time where i'm reflecting on the past and looking forward to the future and i feel like this album captures um that feeling perfectly and so i i feel like that's something that resonates with me heavily a lot right now so coin um dreamland by coin is probably something that you guys should listen to right yeah Okay, for me, I would say American Teen by Khalid because I think overall that album has just a more like a teenager vibe just to like live in the moment and just to seize the day type vibe that I'm really feeling from it. And I think it just overall represents my high school life because it just showed not to take things, like not to worry about the little things and just overall it has a lot of growth in the album. And also the fact that my first concert was with Khalid. I think overall, just Khalid in general just gives me a good high school vibes that I really like. For me, I don't really know if I have an album, but I would say Alicia Cara. Um, there's one song specifically, uh, it's called Seventeen. I feel like most people know it, but it's about how you're waiting to grow up and become an adult. And then when you do, you look back. So I think it's a very common sentiment now where I feel like this is the moment in my life I was waiting for to kind of have a fresh start in like a new place, a new city, um, and study something I like and just get out of cop hell. I think we're all in kind of like, oh, I'm just, I want to get out of this city. I kind of like, I think we all had faith that we wanted to like go somewhere new where no one knew us or something like that. And so I think now that we're here, I feel like I'm realizing all the other things that come with being an adult and being on your own and all the, yeah, all the responsibilities that come with independence. So I kind of want to go back to when I don't have to worry about all this stuff and I can be, because I feel like before our biggest worries were grades. And I feel like we have so many other things that other real things we have to worry about now. So I, I want to go back. So yeah. <laughs> I don't really listen to a lot of songs so I'd say Taylor Swift is uh something or someone that that I don't know like encapsulated my high school experience like throughout high school I told myself not to care too much about what people said and not um uh, do whatever you want and I feel like and people would judge you but like it's fine their people are there to judge you and even though that's that's not really like even I still I still overthink about uh, about so many things. I I think I'm doing way better the better with um, telling myself to like it's fine. Like you're gonna be fine. Like you can mess up. It's no one are gonna like point you out and like call you out. You know. I think she's encapsulated my high school experience. I feel like Lover, like her her album Lover, is um, really great because it's talking about like priorities and do what you love and find people that you love and i love my friends and i love my the things i do and then like i love my creative brain and you know yeah those those kind of things mm -hmm. um i tend to romanticize a lot of my music i i connect a lot of dots i connect a lot of songs with moments in my life and albums with eras of my life um, but I would say that like one album that encapsulates all of the entirety of high school would probably be uh, American Boyfriend, a uh, suburban love story by Kevin Abstract. That album, I listened to it, uh, as I was talking about before, during my, my walks to school. Uh, I think probably like, eh, like two months into, into freshman year, that's when that album would have came out. So I was listening to that for sure. But just the entire vibe of the album, the whole like, uh, not to say, but the, the album has has some kind of deeper uh, uh, meanings behind it. It has some more complex, like uh, how to navigate a, because it's, ba it's based in a suburban setting. So how to navigate like a predominantly white community as uh, African-American who is uh, bisexual or gay and uh, just LGBT in general. Like th those those themes kind of hit for me for some reason, and it's like, uh, you know, 
Capo is isn't like the, the like uh, stereotyped uh, suburban community. I'd say that we have a lot of, of diversity, cultural diversity in here, but I would say that some of the themes were, were kind of prevalent in my life. And I, I use that album to kind of guide me in a way, uh, just because, you know, I wasn't really getting advice from anywhere else. So, and I wasn't going to like kind of depend on like YouTube videos or, or books because I'm not that type of person. So I'm, I, I just use music to kind of guide me in, in how to be a Latino or Hispanic in a community that doesn't always accept you, basically. So that was like heavy for me. In what ways have you seen CHS grow and better itself? whether that be through administration or the student body itself? I don't even know how to answer that because I'm still thinking about like what you said for the last question. I don't know, it just, it was very deep. I just wanted to say that it was very deep. Oh, thank you. So, yeah. Okay, I really don't know how to answer this question. So if someone else wants to go. I mean, yeah. we did see um, like our schedule change all throughout our high school, didn't mm -hmm. it, right? Mm -hmm. Like every year something like, something changed yeah. and mm -hmm. I don't know if it's for the better but like Miss Pringle made it better and last year was oh, yeah yeah definitely. I definitely think that with Springer's positive influence that I that I've definitely seen that teachers are a lot more happier and the administration itself and students too because um when you see um someone like Springer who's constantly you know trying to communicate with her students and like you know get to know them it you you feel like you know happy and you feel like you know there's someone who really cares and just knowing her from sixth grade because I went to Capel Middle School East um, you know she's always like, like I think that person who tries to build a deep connection with you I think that's someone who makes like the vibes a lot better um, you know I still remember the first time I met Springer I told her my name and she's remembered my name ever since then like six years later here we are she's never forgotten my name I don't talk to her on a daily basis and so that just that just means a lot and I think that um, with her um, with her arrival to CHS I definitely think things got a lot better people are definitely a lot happier which is someone who's always positive and present mm -hmm. yeah I feel like if you had any issues with the school itself maybe in the past I feel like under Springer's leadership like those will all be like resolved in one to two years. Like even if they're big, like cheating scandals or whatever, um, she's managed and like she's really shown that 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 she can work through them. And it's so cool to see somebody like step up and be like, "Hey, like we're not accepting this at our school," like and, and stuff like that. I feel like like she's an amazing leader in my opinion. She she's Definitely. also great at um, asking students for what's what's like what's the bad things that that's happening. I remember uh, I was sitting with my friends during during the bus, like when when we were going home. She came to me and my friends, and she asked us about the C day. I mean C day, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. about C day, and she was like, "Okay, do you like it?" And she had like mixed responses, and I feel like she gets input from people to make decisions, and that's like really great too, because it's like it it makes us more. Um, close knit than other schools. I feel like other schools mm -hmm. just make their decision in their little board of trustees and they just like make the decision for everyone. Yeah. But like with Ms. Springer, she like brings everyone together and like, okay, what's your what's everyone's opinion on this and let's make it better. And I feel like we, I didn't we didn't really see that previous years. Yeah, yeah. Not only, oh, sorry. You, no, can, you go. Go. can go. No, 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 you go, you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just gonna say not only that, but y'all kind of touched up with the value she brings I know this year it's kind of like the fish philosophy is kind of like a cliche way to bring it but I think it is cool because the environment before was definitely like more competitive and it was more kind of a cheating mentality but now I think they definitely focus more on relationships and you know that they care about you like your teachers they care about you regardless of what grade you have in their class and I just think I, I understand that better now and I I think it's not that same type of environment um and I think, uh, yeah, everyone focuses more on relationships and just knowing like, who you are as a person instead of what grade you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, like, Miss Springer is definitely, like, a gift to CHS. And it's sad that we only have to, not even for a full year, we got to spend with her maybe, like, a couple of months. Because you could see, like, she's definitely had, like, a big impact. And 
teachers and students that have a closer relationship with each other because it's not there's like a personal connection between both parties and I just think you don't you didn't really see that with past leaders and before it was just more authority based but now you have a leader that's like really connecting with not even like well-known students even like students that you might not think she'd talk to and I think that just really touches a lot of people's hearts. Yeah, not not to pull like the the as someone who's card, but like as someone who's going down the education route in hopes of possibly becoming a principal or some sort of like higher level administration. Um, I feel like having a leader who's there, who isn't, um, who's present, who isn't in their office all day, uh, has really done a lot for CHS. Um, not, not, not to say that like other leaders did that, but mm. just in general, right? Um, yeah. Someone who, who really, really connects with, with their students, as Nanette, Alishva, Nishan, Yashi all said. Um, and that's almost like a direct relationship because with, with what you see with Springer is that she's been trying and so have the students because of that reason. Uh, Stuco, uh, for example, NHS, uh, Red Jackets, whatever. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a direct relationship. It, it, that's what makes it amazing. That's what leadership can cause, especially in a in a high school environment, because because most kids are either like either stepping in or like in the middle of it or already on their way out. So mm -hmm. the reason that like she's been able to unify all that is amazing, and I hope to like that that that's like applauded later in the future or right now. Yeah, I'm really bummed out because um, for my eighth grade graduation ceremony, I took a picture with Springer, and then when I heard that she was going to be um, the principal at CHS, I wanted to take a picture with her in my graduation suit yeah. at graduation. But like oh. now that can't happen. Cause it was like, uh, like a four year gap, but it's whatever, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, you could tell that she really cares. Cause like, even yeah. like when we were in quarantine, like for the past couple of weeks, she's been sending emails, especially to yeah. the seniors. And just like, you can tell that she really cares about her students yeah, and has yeah. a good relationship. Though, yeah. Even the way, um, like, when I went to go pick up my sign, the way she was talking to me, like, from my, like, uh, I was in my car, like, I wanted to hug her so badly, but obviously I couldn't. But, okay. you know, yeah. So sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not to promote crazy levels of self-indulgence, but do you feel like you left a positive impact on the school and the Kapal community itself? Um, that's a that's I, a that's a difficult question to yeah. <laughs> yeah i feel like i don't want to like answer the question without with or by sounding selfish but i think um hopefully at least in the sidekick i hopefully inspired other um, staff members to you know explore new things and um because this year i definitely picked up a lot um more like skills with videography page design photography um, previous years, I was definitely big on writing and maybe page design, but this year I also picked up photography and even videography. So even if my impact is really small, hopefully it's just inspiring other kids to um, try new things, even if they think they're going to fail, because you never know, you might, tr you might love the thing that you're, you know, risking, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I think, I don't know. I don't really have that big of a role in any like place in CHS so I feel like it's just like one out of like 3,000 kids but I'd hope that I'd leave an impact to my friends and just to teach them to be like a better person and I hope that passes on to their other friends and just starts like a whole chain reaction so yeah. You know I relate to that the feeling just like another student in like a really big class even just a senior class for the entire school but I definitely do think we we have impacts in small ways, whether we realize it or not. Like, I feel like a lot of us do volunteering. We're all in NHS, and I feel like we think it's, like, a given, but, I mean, we're still volunteering. That's still, like, 10 hours per student that's having an impact. And um, I guess with Sidekick, I would say it, it's really nice creating content and hearing comments from other people and saying how not only they liked it, but they agree with it and like it had some sort of impact on them. So I think it's really cool not to just consume content, but create it in hopes of at least one person out there, will, it will influence them in any way. I personally don't think I um, made, like 
changed anyone, but hopefully people read my stories and they're like, oh yeah, that's something to think about. Especially the toxic masculinity one. I don't see many people writing about that. And the one about my friend wearing makeup and and also like, okay, all three of my st- good stories. I feel, I, hopefully people will like look at that and be like, it's something to think about. They're like, okay, yeah, something needs to change. But yeah, other than that, I don't think I like made significant changes to anyone. Yeah, same here. Um, I would say that like, even though I worked with a team, I worked with Yash, I worked with a lot of people on the podcast. I would say that that's like the, the, the big impact, the big thing that I'll leave behind. Um, just because it, it kind of set the precedent in a way, you know, if anyone starts a, a new podcast later on, I'm not talking like next year, but in five years, 10 years, maybe they can look back at that and see that they can probably find it cool that like, I was the one who did it. And then like, I don't know, I think that, that'd be a cool, like, kind of Easter egg in a way. And I, I like stuff like that, ro- the, like romantic things, I guess you would say. Um, and also just like, even though I, I don't write anymore, per se, um, the, I did like a trilogy, I think it was a trilogy, yeah, or maybe it was four stories, but I wrote feature stories, those were like my last big stories that I ever wrote, and I really, like, like I poured my, my, my heart and soul out into those, and I really tried to make them as perfect as I possibly could, so for the reason, I actually had a reason, um, and it was that I wanted to like, not make it like an outline for anyone but kind of show make make them like simple yet like kind of show people that they can also like be very emotional and and showcase things that are a bit more like nuanced you would say so in a way I like wrote them as an outline for other people to kind of see and use later on in the psychic and some people have come up to me and told me they have texted me that you know they they kind of inspired them and even though, you know, I don't write anymore, I'm, I'm so grateful that that's been something that I've been able to do, uh, just because I really tried to make those stories, like, basically perfect in my eyes, but nothing's perfect, the podcast is not perfect, and that's what we have next year, um, and I, I'm hoping that all this, this legacy for the psychic that we've been talking about, or even just, like, legacy for our friends and stuff, I hope it really sticks, because, you know, all we can really do is just leave stuff behind. <laughs> I can say, um, Andres was really, Andres really helped me with like, not helped me, but like he's a really positive person. And even if everything is falling apart, he's like all smiling and stuff. And I'm the one who's like losing my mind. I'm just like stressing out about something. And he's like, bro, it's okay. Just chill out. And I'm like, Definitely. I can't chill out, but yeah. like, shut up. <laughs> so that's how yeah. he like inspired me. And Alishba, yeah. you're like really great at writing. And you always were like a great person to like, bounce ideas back and forth and that was really amazing and Nanette also like bro like you were great at almost everything not gonna lie you're like I don't know you like relate to me on like like the royal family level and, and that was like <laughs> a weird whole obsession the whole, yeah they really do and yeah. Nishan like he always like he like reached out to me whenever he needs to like get stuff done and he's really hard working and I feel like Aww. even though like y'all don't see it, I feel like everyone just somehow inspired me to like do something, you know? Yeah, I don't want to hear anyone say they haven't made an impact. You have definitely made an yeah. impact. Aww. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, don't make me cry now. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no, and the last two questions are very emotional, so it's going to get worse. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you had the chance to talk to your freshman self, what would you tell him or her? Ooh, oh my gosh okay I feel like definitely growing up I've always worried a lot Alishba obviously knows but um I just I just I think if I could go back to freshman year it would probably be to um take risks definitely um I'm um and just to worry like less obviously I feel like anybody would say that but um but yeah I mean um taking the sidekick was obviously one of my, it was one of my best decisions I've made in my life. Like, even if I'm stressed about, you know, the program, I will always, I will always be thankful for, you know, taking risks. And if there is one thing I would tell myself or two things, it would probably be like, you know, take risks and to definitely quit worrying because it'll be all right in the end. And, you know, um, don't think about what other people say because, you know, 
everyone is always like everyone like judges you on which college you go to but like once you're senior you realize that it doesn't matter um the underclassmen don't know what they're talking about until you're actually going through it like people talk bad about a certain college but they don't really know the full the full premises you know they don't know a person's financial status they don't know a person's um, emotional or mental status to really judge and I feel like you know just not judging and doing what you're like happy with is something that I would also tell myself so yeah. okay I would say to my freshman self just to like seize the moment and not to like wait on things because if I had known that corona was going to be a thing and that I would be quarantined for my second semester of senior year I would have definitely like spent more time with my friends and just attend more school events I think that I was saving for this year so yeah I just tell her to like live in the moment yeah no I get that um I think we all like kind of dread every single day and we think we have so many days so it's fine but there comes an end and it's crazy how we're at that end. But I, what I would scream at myself is that figure out who you are outside of the academic setting because that's all I prioritized. And I was like, and I didn't know who I was. And I, like, it's, it was fine. Like, okay, if you get good grades, that's, that's good, but balance it with everything else and be well-rounded is what I would say. Because like before I was not at all, but I learned this year. So at least that's good. And then I would, I'd probably also talk about confidence because that was the other really big struggle for me was like, um, I guess I like, care what other people think, not being confident and all that stuff, being more quiet and all that stuff. Um, but I would say that it's okay to be more introverted and it's okay to be quiet, but like confidence isn't going to come to you. You have to go out and put yourself in uncomfortable situations and then it'll come to you. So yeah, I think I was just waiting for myself to become confident when that's not how it works. So yeah. I think mine is like almost the same as Alish because I never, I don't really have confidence even right now, even if I seem like loud and stupid I really don't have the confidence to do anything I saw that smirk Alishba you better check yourself anyway um just put myself out there and like just stop doing what you're doing and like just just be better at what you're like find one thing and just do good at that I guess I don't know yeah, um, I would say that even though I mentioned like our discussion wasn't going to be based around coronavirus, like you can't really answer this question without mentioning that. Um, I would say that I would tell my freshman year that don't work super hard in terms of like your job. Uh, you know, even though like Yash knows this, I worked at uh, Auntie Anne's pretzels, even though it's kind of simple job on, like on the like uh, front level basis, like uh top level surface level but like it kind of enveloped my life like a little bit too much and like it kind of affected me a little bit too much in terms of like how i would just take in every day and like like make it a movie or in a way like just i, I just kind of lived every day a little bit too much when i probably should and i probably should have like disassociated myself a bit more at work and like not worried about like the customers or you know, kind of coworkers that I don't really vibe with or her or her like intentionally mean at times, just kind of disassociate myself and, and not think of things that way because that's not my focus. You know, I'll tell myself that school is your focus. Uh, get into a college you want. Um, I, I would tell myself uh, just make sure that that work doesn't like become this this kind of looming thing where, oh, you don't want to go to work because it does this and that and that. And, um. But yeah, I think that's, that's something that I would say. Um, just because like I've kind of I've I've worked through that now and I'm good now, even though the mall is closed and I won't be going back to work, um, and who knows when. I've I've worked through that, so that's good. It's social anxiety that that that's something that that just takes time. So I would like to tell my freshman self, you know, it's going to be okay. Um, what aspects of your high school experience would you like to replicate in the later stages of your life? I think what I would probably try to replicate is, again, taking risks. Um, I feel like when you grow up, it's like there's definitely a less space to take risks, but that's if you let that happen, um, especially with your career pathway. But 
again, like when I joined the sidekick, it was honestly a risk for me because I didn't really know anything about journalism. I didn't know if I'd like it. I mean, I didn't know anything about writing, designing, photography, interviewing. And so it was something that was way out of my comfort zone. But I think that um, that risk really, it turned out to be one of the best things I ever did. And so hopefully like later in life, if I realize that, you know, something's not, if the career path that I chose today is not for me, like hopefully I'll take that risk and choose something else. And I think that taking risks is, taking risks is something that I really hope to replicate in my later stages of life. So, yeah. Um, for me, I would say definitely being confident in your decisions because through like choosing classes for the upcoming like school year I would always have like people tell me like oh are you sure you want to take this class or like especially for like academic decathlon when I was like choosing for the junior year a lot of people just really dragged the name down and just said it was just more like a nerdy type class but I still stood by it and just decided to take it and honestly it's one of my favorite classes because there's just a different like a feel to it like you don't really have like it's not more of a class but it's like a family and especially since it's more of a smaller like group there's like only like 10 kids in that class it just feels more connected so I think beyond high school I'd just say be more confident in like my decisions and not to take anyone's don't let other people's words like affect the way you want things to happen Mine's pretty similar to that. I think I'm very, very, very indecisive. Um, I like, overthink things. I think about all the possibilities, but sometimes you just have to like go for it. And I feel like I like similar with that. I wanted to take um, I wanted to take American Sign Language, and everyone was kind of like, I mean, like when are you going to use it? And you're already taking Spanish, and uh, that there was no honors, so it was only regular. Oh, like it's going to bring your GPA down. And at the end of the day, I was like, do I want to learn a new language or do I want a high GPA? Like, I feel like um, it's good to ask other people's advice, but realize that sometimes when you just ask other people, you're going to have all these opinions in your head and you're not going to know what your voice is. So I think I've gotten better at just being confident in my opinion and knowing that there's so many people that disagree with me, like even my own parents. But sometimes at the end of the day, you have to just trust yourself and mm -hmm. trust yeah. your voice and yeah, do what so you love, regardless yeah. of the number as a GPA and now in the future regardless of like money for me like I want to go into a career and everyone's like oh you're not going to make that much money and I'm like you know what like I don't like I still don't care like and I don't really care. like that's just like it's okay to care like yeah like you can if that's what you want go for it but if it's not like don't drag someone else down because of it yeah following up on that um I definitely wish that I took a little bit more challenging courses like obviously I'm going to the science uh, science field so I wish I took courses like AP bio but um, then in high school there's so many people who are like oh my gosh that class is so hard like don't do it like so to this day like I'm still like I don't know if I did the right decision but um, yeah I, hope, I wish like sometimes like I wouldn't let other people's um, thoughts influence my own decision and I sometimes wish I just I experienced it for myself to see if it was really for me um, one of the things I don't, I'd like to replicate slash I don't want to change is losing, losing my inner child, I feel like. I mean, I've always loved Disney, even when my parents were like, ew, those are like children's movies. Um, I just don't want to grow up and be like one of those boring old people. And I feel like that's like so many people's like young adults pro uh, issues. I mean um something they always think about but it's more for me because I'm always like I, I always want to be a child and like I'm mature obviously but like I don't want to lose those aspects of my I still want to like love Disney I want to still like experience some of the things like people will say oh you're not you're an adult like don't do that so I feel like I don't that that's the thing I just want to replicate throughout my life yeah um mine's a bit different um something that i would like to replicate i feel like i'm using this word like i just learned it yesterday but uh i would like to imbue like the same amounts of, of romanticism 
uh, that I did like in my high school career in like later stages of my life because it was just so awesome um, connecting albums, connecting movies and shows with like specific moments and, t- and feelings because I kind of surrounded myself with entertainment and media like all throughout high school and because I'm like kind of introverted and not antisocial but you know just on that on that level um that that's those those are the things that like really shaped me to become who I am and it's really cool because it's like I can really call back to like specific stuff and like how books and stuff and it's just cool Um, so I would like to continue doing that um but yeah like for sure even with that in mind like foster relationships with people that are healthy um I didn't have the best relationships with people in high school I would say that but I, I wanted to like grow in that way and I just feel like by replicating the romanticism I can also introduce people to that and just kind of make life a movie even more so than it already is thank you all for joining us in the 48th episode of the penny podcast links to the material we mentioned today can be found below and we are now down to the last two episodes of the penny podcast but see y'all next week